Let's Talk Sports fans. Thanks for tuning in. Good evening, everybody. Let us talk to you. Definitely no, so. Oh, my God. Especially after last night. Jesus, I'm... Like you said, Sam, I'm exhausted after that. Yeah, dude. I went I like I, I crawled into bed. My wife's like did asleep, but I just like stared up at the ceiling for a second, like, what in the world just happened? <laughs> like, right. Amazing. Right. Amazing. Loved it. Anywho, welcome everybody to On the Map. My name is Alan, and of course I'm joined by Mr. First Down. Sam, yeah. how are you doing tonight? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm doing great. He's gonna talk to us. He's gonna talk to us, Alan. He's gonna talk to us from a jail cell, that is. He did not press charges, which is great. I'm glad that came out of the WWE digital content, too. By the way, he didn't press charges. Oh, did not well, press charges. Whoopie I'm glad did. you're telling us this and not the Georgia PD. Like, I think it's fantastic. <laughs> right, right. But, yeah, you know, crazy week. You know, especially, I mean, again, last night was insanity. Um, but we'll get into that. Uh, in like, a I bit. knew it was going to get hyped up. Like, we all knew this was going to get hyped up. But this... This is like somebody grabbed a ratchet and was just like jacking it over and over again. And you know, we get and we and it's it's great. The road to WrestleMania is always fun and we get to cover it and that's that's awesome. And just Friday and Monday alone, just absolutely epic. It, it doesn't get any better than that. Doesn't get anybody better. Than doesn't that. no, doesn't get any better than that. You know, Friday I'm I'm excited for this Friday because I feel like it, it's about to get crazy. But then oh, yeah. again, it is on Fox, so you never know. Um, as long as he talks to us, Alan, that's all I want. That's all, that's all, that's all I want. we want. That's all we want. That's it. Let's go back to Friday, shall we? We had, yeah. um, of course, we had the face to face, which is at the end, which we'll get into. But uh, which let's one start. Let's start. Let's start with. I mean, some of the. I I guess you could say kind of filler, but we started off with Ray and uh, Santos, Santos, which was, which yeah. was a really yeah. solid match. You Here know. comes the, the black sheep Dominic Mysterio messing with his dad once again. Do, do uh, you think we could get – now, this is what I, – I thought about this earlier. Do you think we could probably get Santos and Dominic against Ray and Andrade? A hundred percent. Or either that or Andrade joins Santos and brings Dominic with him. Because he keeps talking to Dominic, Andrade does. And, I, mm-hmm. and things we see, and it feels like I don't know. He comes off as kind of like this Godfather type dude, Andrade does. And I'd be kind of interested to see if he's trying to get Dominic to forge his own path that doesn't involve the Judgment Day or or, or Goth Mommy. By the way, by the way, well, he, well, how many times he did. Watch, how many were, times did you watch Goth Mommy do the stink face to uh, Nia Jax? Let's see. What day is today? <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw that video and I said, oh boy, Alan's one happy boy. Oh. Buddy Matthews put on there just the gif of a guy nodding over and over again. So, no, like, no, he was just, no, he was like, no, that ha- this happens to me on a nightly basis. <laughs> I bet it does. I, I bet it does. And then freaking, freaking Shayna was wanting Shayna, yeah. Shayna Baser. Kudos. Bravo. Yeah. Bravo. She got, she got a bunch of Nia Jax's butt, but you know. Take one for the team. Yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you do yeah. it. There. But, yeah, I, I apologize. Santos and Rey Mysterio. Santos wins because of uh, because we can't have just Rey, like, lose clean. He's, he's got to be distracted. He, it's got to be because of his illegitimate child. Right, yeah. <laughs> Can they let that storyline go? Nobody buys it. I, but No. No, because Dominic is the spinning image of Rey Mysterio. If oh, yeah. Look at them. A hundred percent. You see Ray without his mask on. But my roommate, my roommate used to call him a little Ray, but I was like, that guy is bigger than Ray, sir. To his credit, we've talked about this before. Uh, Dominic has done an excellent job uh, becoming something totally different than his dad. He, he has done an excellent job of that. But I worry, though, for him because I don't want him to get just stuck there. Because if he's stuck there, he's just stuck as a mid carder the rest of his career. He's got to find a way. Maybe that's with Andrade to try to push him out of that 
uh, mode with Judgment Day or whatnot. And that, by the way, that group totally needs to break up. We say it every week. We're going to continue to say it. And I mean, look, 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 we all yeah. know we all know the cash in's coming. Okay, it's coming at WrestleMania when Seth is going to be dog tired or Drew McIntyre or something like that. The only question is, is it successful or does it fail? That's the question. Uh, the, the question is going to be, you know, how many matches is Seth going to go through before he gets exhausted? <laughs> yeah. Well, before he is his back surgically repaired. Can we talk about that? <laughs> like, right. Jesus, dude. Yeah. Oh, 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 we'll get into that because that that was that was fun to watch mm -hmm. last night. But um, yeah, I love what Andrade's doing. He, he you know, Me he too. was asked he was asked if he wanted why he didn't go to SmackDown since you know Charlotte was on SmackDown. He's like, Monday Night Raw didn't have any, you know. Well, it needed well, it needed stars for one, right? And you know, he felt like there was a lot of you know Hispanic representation on SmackDown that they didn't need more of it. Right. And it, it's like, you different. know, I go to, yeah. And he's, he's different from, you know, the guys that you, you know, from Santos, from Ray, from everybody in the LWO, Legato and all that stuff. Right. He's not involved with any faction. He's pretty, uh, I don't know. He's kind of a renegade. It's like the Punisher kind of type. You know what I mean? He's like, he's like a godfather. He's like a Mexican right, godfather. Exactly. He's there with the cigar and the nice suit, you know. <laughs> Uh, they give you a nice little back elbow for your trouble. Yeah, Dominic is, you know, you know, he's talking to, hey, kid, you know, you don't need to do that, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But, you know, um, I can't wait to talk about Raw here in a second. But we, we, we yeah. the, SmackDown was good, folks. Don't get us wrong. Smack, was, yeah, SmackDown was good. This was probably the best Monday Night Raw we've seen in years. Right, though. because we talk about this every time. They have to do something about Raw because – that SmackDown was just not, a, not only did we get amazing stuff on Monday night, but I feel like we start we're start to establish everybody's spots going forward and starting to see who's going to be where, who's going to be going with who, and all this yes. stuff. And they're finally having some stability on Monday nights, which is yes. just great to see. Which they've been they've been missing that for a very very long time. Um, so. Next, we got uh, Bailey thanking Naomi. Oh, thank you. You know, whatever. Bianca Belair yeah, you know, gets yeah. in her face or whatnot. Um, that, I, I don't know. I, you could do with that or whatever. I, I was just kind of sitting there. Yeah. Like, Boy, you, I, it, the, the problem is it's delivered in such a way that as soon as I see Bailey and Naomi out there, I'm like, oh, okay, all right, we're, we're going to ratchet up the EO Sky thing, which is which I'm all about because Sam is Team EO Sky. But – uh, I mean, she's she's gonna lose that belt, I think, to Bailey. <laughs> so Eo with the backstage attack, and then of course Bianca goes out when Bailey's not in the ring. So uh -huh. there's uh -huh. kind of that's a little bit of a storyline tidbit there too. Mm -hmm. um, that also kind of plays into now Jake Cargill is on SmackDown because she's expected to be a part of this story. I cannot wait! I cannot wait for this woman. This is gonna be great. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait for her. To like that we we're gonna start seeing her moves. We're gonna start seeing her work, and if it all works out, man, we're gonna see her challenge Goth Mommy and everybody because my God, she can do it. She can and do Tiffy. it. And Tiffy, and Tiffy, right? But that, uh, yeah, we talked about this. They've desperately needed because Rhea Ripley is you know a freaking phenomenal monster of a woman, and mm -hmm. uh, they keep having Nia Jax go after her over and over because she's the only one that can do it. And they're going to make skinny Becky go out there. But Becky, I mean, come on. We saw that last night. They, there's no way Becky would ever, like, stand a chance against this woman. So you Nice need sucker to punch to Dom, though. That was great. Yeah. Uh, they slowed it down. I saw him loosen his jaw before it happened, so he knew it was coming. But mm -hmm. still, he still took one. He still took that. I'm, bump I'm, I'm kind point. of upset. I didn't see the gif of him when he gets punched, where the sonic rings come out. I didn't see yeah. that. I was, I was like, <laughs> I, very clever, very clever. But to finish the finish up here, um, poor Naomi gets sprayed in the face, and we got our 12 seconds of Tiffy just walking by, going icky, and you know, <laughs> it's like 12 seconds is all you need, Sam. <laughs> with with uh, my Tiffy time, yes, that is all I need. Just the fact that she looked at me is enough. 
<laughs> I was gonna say, I wonder what they're gonna do do with her going forward because it doesn't seem like she's gonna be at WrestleMania. But she you know. took a, she got a week off today. You know what I mean? That's that's something for like a new person. That's rare. Mm-hmm. Uh, like she 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 didn't wrestle on SmackDown, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't see her wrestle. Mm-mm. I would have noticed if she had wrestled, but you 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 probably would have. I, you would have gotten eight text messages going. It is Tiffy time over and over. Tiffy time, Tiffy time, Tiffy time, Tiffy time. Um, but yeah, it, you know they're ratcheting up the whole damage control or whatever. Bailey's going to need help though. Ba- there's no way she can go in there naked or whatnot. And I, uh, I also uh, this Dakota Kai. I, I don't know. I don't know why we keep pumping up Dakota Kai. I I, I haven't seen anything that tells me like this is great. I don't know. Well, she's a, also still coming back from injury too. So. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Even even before that, though, I'm like, okay, like she's just a streamer. That's all I ever see her do is stream video games on her Twitch. Mm-hmm. Um, Austin Theory and Grace Rodriguez OC. I'm gonna say it, Alan. The OC outplayed them totally. It felt wrong. For Grayson and Waller and Austin Theory to win that, I I, I don't know what it was because I, I'll be honest, Grayson Waller's terrific. He is a terrific in the ring or whatnot. But I felt like I don't know. It just felt like there were some botches here and there. Austin wasn't mm-hmm. selling things, and I don't know. It was rough. And then of course the OC has to lose because we have to have Austin Theory. And Grayson and Waller go up against what uh, the the Street Profits to see who gets to go into that. that and you match. know the you know Austin Theory and Grayson and Waller are winning that match. Oh yeah, they're going to win. The Street Profits are going to get get blindsided by ALP. So oh, yeah, no, it, it's just a match. But they'll see they'll go to WrestleMania too because that'll be another tag team match they can have. Yeah. The authors of Pain versus excuse me, all of that. But Austin Theory and Grayson and Waller in that big time match. Psh, I don't know. I just like they're just gonna yeah, run. I, I, I have a feeling that Theory's gonna walk out on Grayson, and that's gonna yeah. start a little thing that that I might so. invigorate a little bit into Austin Theory, but that I might also get the crowd behind Grayson Waller, which I think they're trying to do. Right, I think they're trying well, to move into Grayson Waller this. right now. He's got to stop He's like great. insulting people. Like you know, it's it doesn't work that way all the time, but um. I just want to walk by like uh, Triple H's office every now and then. Just like, hey, bud, how you doing? Remember, don't you ever think that Austin Theory and Grayson Waller should win this match? They are not going to win those. Uh, they are not winning those belts. You hear me? Of They're not winning those belts. Of don't, course, don't it's our it. truth in the it's our truth in the Miz. Oh, please do it, please. Especially will... after what happened Monday. What's up, everybody in the head? What's up? What's up? You're supposed to say what's up. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's What's up? Up? What's up? Oh man, that I, that took me back. I was so happy to see that. And then um, we're also, I think we're also getting the other uh, tag team final match uh, this week on SmackDown as well, which I think is uh, uh, Pete Dunn and uh, Tyler Bate, and I forget oh, who they're going boy. up against. Bates a big boy or whatever they like to say. Oh, they're going to the Cal Denville Tasma. So I think, Ooh. yeah, this, this is probably going to be uh, Tyler Bate and. Um, done. Pete done that win that match, especially yeah. if it ends up being LWO and uh, uh, you know Legato at some point down the line. So, right, Jade Cargo officially announced. Big deal. Finally, I, mm-hmm. I, I think we were. I think I speak for everyone here when we we're like, freaking finally, here she comes. Mm-hmm. This phenomenal looking woman is finally going to compete. Boy. They they took her, they took their time with her, and boy, I hope it works out. Like it's got to work out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that and that kind of brings me to another thing you know, about Braun Breaker, and it's like I feel like these guys got called up a little bit too soon. Yeah, because Braun Breaker. And I, said, I think I said it. Last, I think I said it last week too. Is like because mm-hmm. they're still in NXT. Him and Corbin yeah. are still in NXT. So it's like, yeah. you know, what are you gonna do with them until maybe? If they do drop the titles at some point at, at Stand and Deliver, then you can move Baron and you Braun Breaker to to SmackDown fully. But you know, I don't know what 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 are they going to do with them right now? It's just show video packages of them spearing guys in half and looking like you know a roided up <laughs> against 
Jesus. I think the, there's so much, like they're too busy focusing, and for good reason, on all these things that are going to happen at um, WrestleMania. And they don't have time to really fit him in anywhere. I mean, hell, they barely have time to fit in like Tiffy, right? There's like her and Misha and have like a three-minute match and, hey, have a nice day. See you later. I mean, they didn't even wrestle. Like we talked about, they, did, they didn't even wrestle Friday. So, you know, it, it's it's a mess. Uh, but it, at least it's a mess with, like, all the other main acts looks amazing. They, they look great. So that's where we are. Um, let's see. What happened next? Kevin Owens and Randy Orton challenged pretty daily to a tag team match. Yes, boy. Give us a yeah. yes, boy, Alan. Give us a yes. Yes, boy. Yes, boy. I was in I, – so I was at a, a Raw show. And everybody's so, what, so the question is going to be, what kind of crazy RKO are we going to see Nick this Friday? I, I hope it's both of them. I hope, I hope Kevin Owens punches both of them again, and he just RKOs both of them, and we and we call it a day, and we're all very happy because those two men are the most obnoxious people on the face of this planet. But I was in, a, I was in a raw in Nashville. And everybody's chanting everything, right? There's like, woo, woo, before the show starts. Everybody's doing Ric Flair. And then, of course, me and everybody else, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can hear it all around the stadium. And somebody goes, yes, boy, <laughs> like in the darkness. And people start laughing. And then, of course, and then that started the thank yous. And thank you. like that. Yeah, and I was like, boy, nothing beats fan- wrestling fans, I swear. But he, there was only one man that's like, yes, boy, <laughs> like in the middle of <laughs> People. And people are like, no, <laughs> we're not doing that. No. I'll do shoosh before I say yes, boy. Shoosh. I hate the shoosh. I hate it. It's so bad, Alan. He's such a good wrestler, Alan. Why are we doing this to Chad Gable? Why? I just I don't... To be fair, it got him a tag team title, so. I guess, but come on. Uh, shoosh. I... Shoosh. Thank you. Like, oh my God. Stop it. Ooh. Anyway, LA Knight gets arrested by AJ Styles. That was a fun episode of Cops. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it was. Uh, what? It's fun. I mean, that's what it looked like. I mean, I'm sorry, that, that caught me off guard. That was a fun episode of Cops. Yeah, I mean, like, they have him in the back seat. He's like, as soon as I made Bill, AJ, I'm coming back. Yeah. Like, this is ridiculous. I, I, wonder, I wonder if Friday they're going to get a, a, a stipulation added to that match. Because mm. it seems like that's the that's where they're headed. Yeah, whoever yeah. whoever yeah. wins, the other one AJ has to attacking him with the AJ attacking him with the chair, LA Knight breaking into his home. <laughs> getting arrested it's just so weird like i was sitting there like is this really happening right now he's out there with a slim jim car honking his horn you know ang, ang, ang. and freaking like here's the cops and they get him <laughs> and la Knight's just talking mad garbage the whole time just didn't shut up the whole time beautiful <laughs> Just Beautiful. the just the thermal vision of him in the back seat. Hey, when I make Bell, I'm coming back. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's just like, uh, and of course AJ Styles doesn't press charges <clears throat> anyway. But who saw that coming? I mean, right. That it was a fun. It was a fun clip. It took me back. Uh, I know Scott didn't particularly like it, but I thought it was fun. I think it's great to do stuff that you can't overdo. Well, 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 Scott's also cranky and old, so yeah, he is cranky. And old. <laughs> Love you, Scott. He, he is the he is the wise man, though. He, he you got to call man. him by his. You got to call him by his. My dream is to make us all wrestlers, where we shoot on each other, and eventually, when we meet up, just give each other RKOs the entire time. When we finally have the Dan Harris Invitational, where we all oh, meet up goodness. in a single place. <laughs> We have to make sure there's a wrestling ring there. So, so, can, so uh, I got to ask, though, who who is more of the rock role? Is it Tanner or Nick? Oh, it, it's got to be Nick. Tanner Tanner's more of the... Tanner, Tanner's the Roman Reigns because he's never there half the time. That was, <laughs> 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 if you can clip that, can you clip that? That's really... I, I don't know how to, but if Where's Tanner it? watches this back, Tanner, if you watch this back, please. All right, back. we did this at 19 minutes and 45 seconds. So, okay, uh, I'll have to come back to that. Um, 
Street Profits, Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford actually decide to win a match against the Authors of Pain, which, mm-hmm. by the way, is so... Which is why I feel like they're losing this Friday. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't feel right. But, like, I don't know. They could do so much better with the Street Profits. We're still doing this Lashley thing and... Uh, yeah, I mean, they're trying with it. It's just It doesn't just seem to work. Well, the problem is they're not like a, a full unit, right? Like, these guys come out, and there's these two hulking men carrying Cross, his wife Scarlet, who needs to go back blonde, by the way, and that creepy old bald man who looks like the Paul, vulture from uh, Spider-Man. Paul Ellering. Paul Ellering, yeah. <laughs> you know. I, I feel one, like of the, one of the most underrated managers of all time, by the way. True. Like, old no, school, old, old school manager from back fact, in the day. They're not making them cool enough, though. They're the final testament. And they, they, they have like nice looking shirts, but all they do is like, ha 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 ha. We're going to mess with only the street profits and nobody else. Like these people, like, come on. Come on. I mean, at least like, at least like, like you had the uh, Undertaker's cronies and stuff like that back in the day, mm-hmm. or or um um uh, uh was it a- the minister stuff- the the Ministry of Darkness uh, yeah and it, yes and stuff like that but th- these guys just like I don't like the Street Profits so we're just gonna beat the crap out of them we're never gonna go after anyone else just mm-hmm. the Street Profits and it's like why <laughs> like, it's like i'm hoping that after wrestlemania they just start fresh with everybody and it's like you know what i love how they just gave everybody up. everybody go after the bloodline how about that yeah it look this has to stop my dream i'll i'll go ahead and give you my dreams the dream scenario what i want in my life alan i need it in my life is uh people coming in to stop cody from winning and in his darkest hour that glass shatters and down and here he comes walking down the Texas rattlesnake comes in and helps Cody. And he's like, this is for your dad or whatever, you know, and well, you know, there was the, we'll, we'll get right. To that, right. That and the, John there Cena. was the subtle hit on the trailer with yeah. the Rocks, there, there, the no Rocks two greatest rivals on the same trailer in the same shot. There's no way. Like, There's no huh, way. No. Ominous. Oh yeah, so something's gonna happen there. It has to. But uh, I mean, we end the night with oh look, Roman lied and he brought two flunkies there. And but Cody also oh, but don't lied. Worry. And Cody two also people. lied. Uh, we're playing. We're playing. It's like the Cold War. Like we're just watching these two people just stare each other down. But someone took that whole clip and put the Avengers theme to it, and I was like, <laughs> yes. Da, da, da. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, Avengers Assemble. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, you know, that ending was okay. I just didn't see the – I thought they were really going to talk about something. I mean, the only thing of substance I got out of that conversation was uh, I was a bad guy. I was like, you are a bad guy, Roman. You're very mm-hmm. bad. Um, mm-hmm. and, but so was Seth. And, like, so he's trying mm-hmm. to plant seeds of dissent. Well, well, here's the thing. You look back at it. Seth has betrayed both members of the S.H.I.E.L.D. And he's basically stabbed every partner he's ever had in the back. Right. And he's really, Roman, Roman, to his credit, he is the only member of the S.H.I.E.L.D. and the only member of the Bloodline that hasn't turned on anybody. Right. He has been loyal to any every, all of his followers and every all of his you know tag partners and whatnot. He has not turned on anybody. Right, he's just Neither, an asshole. <laughs> he's just, he's just, he's Am I wrong? everybody. Everybody turns on Roman. That's the show here. <laughs> I can't why imagine it's, why he's so. Why much the fun. Rock's gonna do it? Mm-hmm. That's true. Um. But yeah, the shield references, and then. Yeah, the last, yeah, let's say tag team wise, the only team that, the first team that did beat them as a tag team was the Rhodes. Was, was Cody and Dustin. Mm-hmm. So, which, nice figured. callback, nice callback to that. Yeah, no, no, totally. It was great. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of would liked, I would have liked Paul Heyman looking at Roman like, I, I promised him. Or something like like I would like a little dissension there between the wise man and uh, um, Roman Reigns. I I didn't get it, and that's okay. But I, I think I think that's a good opportunity. But 
I need this. I need this to crumble. You don't have to get rid of the bloodline fully, but I need Roman to crumble with his cronies. Uh, I feel like him losing the title is going to send him into a tailward spiral. Uh, well, somebody needs to come and take the tribal chief away from him, right? Somebody's going to come in and say, you, "You've." You've dishonor, dishonor on you, dishonor on your family, dishonor and on that's your why I think we're gonna get Roman and the Rock down the line. It's gonna be oh, the yeah. tribal chief. Chiefdom. Yeah, the, the the chiefdom, uh, the chiefdom uh, at Crown Jewel. Uh, but the um, we'll we'll jump into Monday Night Raw because oh my god, this show was amazing from top to Ooh. bottom. Like I said this earlier, this is probably one of the best Monday Night Raws we've had in a very long very, time. Very. It started with Cody, as per usual. What do you want to talk about? Talks about Roman. Brings well, up Seth. Chicago, what do you want to talk about? Yeah. Brings up Roman, brings up, and in the minute he talks about The Rock, we get... Can you smell what The Rock... Which was a surprise to everybody because he was not advertised for that show. Remember, he's advertised right. for next week's show. Walked right out there, stared at Cody, whispered something, and walked out. Like, probably Apparently, he said, I will make you bleed. And, well. <laughs> he, was, he was not kidding. As we found out at the end of the show, he was yeah. not joking. He was not joking. A little hard to watch that. I, I still was like, yikes, this is just somebody gets getting wrecked. Um yeah. But it felt very Attitude Era esque. In yeah. fact, the whole night kind of did. If you, if I'm being honest. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's what I said. I was like, "Come on!" I think you and I are like, "Come on, just get to Netflix. You just got to get to Netflix." And then we had a uh, NXT Takeover match to open the night uh, between JD McDonough and Ricochet. Great, great match between are, these two. They they did a great job. Poor JD, man. Something that guy's just gonna get jobbed the entire. I mean, that standing Spanish fly is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, without, without question. But I, then, a, you know, Ricochet just casually pulling out a, uh, you know, a, a shooting star cross body out of nowhere. Right. You know. The man can backflip in his sleep. Like, it's ridiculous. He, he, can't he literally out. backflips in his sleep. Mm-hmm. Really? I mean, we're talking about the guy. That could literally like just hop off on his feet and jump around the place like a freaking grasshopper. There's just no stopping him. Um, I would like to see more from Ricochet, but uh, until I mean, they keep putting him with a tag team partner, not now, but uh, if we can get a little more dynamic from that guy, a little Mike, I think, like I, I mentioned this earlier, I think they're establishing where everybody's going to be at going forward. I think they did that last night. This is also his third straight match against Judgment Day that he's won. Ricochet's going to be one of the top-tier mid-card guys Mm -hmm. for sure. You know, Maybe he gets a a shot at the world title down the line. Who knows? But he's definitely going to be the top tier, one of the top tier mid card guys. I mean, you're still going to have Gunther. You're still going to have, you know, Andrade for a little bit, which he could move up to the world title picture. You Mm -hmm. know, they, these guys are getting established. And I even think J.D. McDonough is going to be a, a mainstay in the mid-card for a bit. For a second, yeah. I, I'm Like like you and I keep saying, I'm ready for the, the Judgment Day to have a problem. They need to have a problem. I need I need something to go wrong for them. Uh, Poor our truth <laughs> Go to commercial. Go to commercial. <laughs> He's got the crap kicked out of him. <laughs> so funny! Oh man, poor Archer. Yeah, I mean, it was a, it made Judgment Day look okay, and then it just you know the Archer thing was funny. Um, that was probably the one blemish on the entire night was that was that whole spot, but it was still yeah. okay. It, it, I I don't know. The blemish for me is Candice LeRae. I why are we pushing this as a storyline? I I just. I mean, her just beating up people for no reason. For no reason, and like using the ropes. Okay, all right, you're trying to make her bad, but I mean Nile, that woman is built. Like that woman could kill somebody, and you're going to make this teeny tiny little woman, this teeny tiny Candice LeRae, the Poison Pixie, which I hate, by the way. I hate that name. 
Uh, it's so dumb. Good. She's supposed to. You're supposed to hate her. Well, good. I, I hate her even more now. I, but like, they're trying to make this a storyline, and now I mean, we all know that Hartwell and her are going to have a match eventually down the line because Hartwell's like, I can't believe you're behaving this way, like clutching her pearls. Like, come on, man. Come on. Uh, you're trying to make me. You're trying to make me buy into that storyline, and I just don't care. Um, New Day versus DIY ended in no contest, which was interesting. Which uh, was the the judgment of the judgment day stuff. Yeah, and then Truth and Miz comes out and all that stuff. I I really love DIY. I I hope I really hope they get a, a big shot at this, or they they strongly consider it because I I think they're fantastic. I like New Day too. Don't get me wrong, but DIY Tomoso Champa uh, and Johnny Gargano are just fun. I don't- I have a feeling oh, yeah. that if it's not our truth in the Miz that wins the titles, it's DIY. It's got to be there. That would be so epic. I love their outfits. I think they're fantastic. They're great wrestlers. Each of them in their own way. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's what we're going to do at the Dan Harris Invitation. No, 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 no not DIY, DX. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, let's see. Yeah, the, the, Miz and our truth and all that. Yeah, go to commercial for our mm-hmm. truth. I mean, not a lot to say after that, but like one of those guys is supposed to lose and one of those guys is supposed to win. And we didn't get everybody it. lost except for Judgment Day. Right. Are we just going to throw them into the, the thing? I don't know. It, it just kind of left it in free fall. Like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Speaking of Judgment Day, Goth Mommy. Good old Goth Mommy. <laughs> She's worried about her. She's worried about her little, her, uh, her, her Latina. I, I did like the little back and forth with her and Becky that uh, last night. It was that was fun. Uh, it she was, it was fun. And and I was like, whoa. Anyway, well, but, well, but again, Punk kind of mentioned Becky later on. So I, I know we'll, I, we'll I, get to that because that's a whole can of worms. Yeah, there. yeah. We're gonna but, be up to eleven p.m. dissecting every word. But, but, but the, the, every single word of that entire promo. Uh, but but yeah, great, great exchange here. I'm I'm actually excited for this match. Honestly, that, I think this, Becky, this could low punched, key be one of Becky, uh, this could low key be one of the better matches of. I'm excited it, for WrestleMania in general, but I think this could be a really good match. It really could. I I wish Becky would win, but she. I don't think she's going to. And, know, and the really Becky is. with the sucker punch to Dom was great. Yes. No. Totally. Bronson Reed versus Sami Zayn. That was fun. Bronson Reed winning kind of surprised me a little bit, yeah, especially no, with it, Sam with Sammy. It kind of I think there's the na- the narrative that they're trying to play here is can Sammy really beat Gunther? Right. I think that's the the narrative they're trying to sell. If he can't beat a guy like Bronson Reed, can he really beat Gunther? Yeah. Is yeah. his mentality too shaken up for this match? Is I think that's what they're trying to play with here. It, it definitely works. Uh I, I didn't expect it either. It was a nice surprise. That that see, that's when you need to pull the rug out from somebody. See, you know. And see, I think both him and Gunther, if, if if when eventually Gunther loses the title, I think he's getting moved to the main event spot uh, as well. So I think Bronson Reed is going to be a good mid card guy going forward. They're establishing a lot of good talent here. So they really are. They really are. Bronson Reed. I've never seen a man that big move that well. He moves very well. Mm-hmm. Uh but yeah, it, it, that was a lovely surprise. I, I love how Gunther comes out and distracts him. I mean, Sammy, he's just sitting at the top of the ramp, my guy. He's not doing anything. Take, take, take your eye off the ball, man. Yeah, come on. The ball, the ball is a massive human being from Australia. <laughs> he could he could chop you in half too. Oh yeah, no, no, totally. Good match, strong yeah. match. Liked it. So. Where do you? Which one do you want to do first? You want to do Cody getting the daylights destroyed, like kicked out of him slowly, or do you want to do the promo? Well, let let's go with the the world title promo here because it starts out with CM Punk coming out, uh, you know, doing his doing his usual you know stuff, you know. I know about I'm, Chicago. In Chicago, we all fight up. Pro- Shut up, dude. <laughs> yeah. Doing his usual things, you know, promoting a bunch of other things that aren't associated with the company, like Jim Cornette. Um, oh yeah, but yep. this whole thing between Punk being Punk, McIntyre being an absolute troll the entire time, 
just and then Seth, movie. and then Seth being you know being the Seth Rollins that he is, this was fantastic. It was this whole promo segment was fantastic. I kind of felt, I kind of felt that the winner out of that whole thing was uh, 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 DM Hunk. I, I, I think <laughs> Drew was better than both of them. Honestly, he looked comfortable, cool, collected. He sat over there. He talked about uh, <laughs> he talked about CM Punk's biceps, which I thought were fantastic. I have trouble yeah, getting yeah, out of his shirt because of my biceps. He's like, you've never had that problem. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it, it was so good because even the Chicago crowd that was clearly behind Punk was like, oh. <laughs> the, then McIntyre mentioning he was the Chosha one, and then Punk was like, who to, who gave you that title? Who told you you were the Chosha one? Say his name. Say his name. <laughs> who, who did, by the way? I don't know. Who was Vince that? McMahon. That's oh, why he couldn't Vince say it. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's why he hilarious. couldn't say it. That's really that's why funny. He, that's why he could. That's the whole the whole thing. And then Rollins comes out and he's like, you know, so what Rollins, are you doing? Look, at look, they got to be careful here because Rollins clearly does not like CM Punk. Like it's, he doesn't like either of them, honestly. Nobody. That's what made this so great. None of these uh, three guys like each other at all. At all. And I felt like I felt like like I don't know. To me, it felt like CM Punk and Seth had like some bad like bad blood. It seemed like if they had bad blood with McIntyre, he handled it a lot more casually mm-hmm. than the other two did. You, you uh, can kind of tell that they that, that they knew what they were doing, but that this, there's also some genuine hatred between the two. Yeah, the way Seth was like not looking at him and just walking back and forth, he looked like, he just looked pissed off. But you know, you know the, the crowd was chanting referee, referee, and then Seth was like, I don't know. It's that's his counting. Count. And then he just gets down. Yeah. <laughs> I hate both uh, dipshits. Uh, uh, Two shit. PG, brother, PG. Yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> See, that's was- why I think he won, because he, he is just terrific. Oh, um, it I, was just the perfect story. This whole thing was great. This whole thing was great. All three guys did a great job, whether they hated each other or not. It was, it was a fantastic. <coughs> it was that, that like, was but it was money. It was money, and you knew think, that's what they were thinking. It's like we got to put these three guys in the same ring together. Oh, absolutely. And and WrestleMania, uh, did a thing. I I, I like WrestleMania. They have and great that, content on YouTube. Uh, but they said, like, oh, Punk got out there and used his wits or whatnot. You're not really using your wits if you're just saying to the crowd, like, tell him, tell him who's your guy and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's mm-hmm. not using your wits. That's, you know. <laughs> and he, then he had you know, Jim, I th- Jim, Jim said it last night, I think, you know, mentioning the promo from his, you know, The Rock back in 2013, mm-hmm. you know, arms too short to box with God, mm-hmm. you know. Great callbacks, great, great everything. You know, Punk mentioning Becky as well to Seth. Yeah, with, I okay, like, ruffled his definitely crazy. ruffled his. Fe- I, I was like, you need to be careful. Like these two. See, I oh. always wondered. I always wondered if was Drew out there to break up a fight. Like if, if it got like bad, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I felt like that curb stomp was delivered with a little bit of aggression. <laughs> A little bit, no, totally. But I was like, when he started mentioning Becky, I was like, "Oh, easy, chief, easy." Yeah, that I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think we actually need like a real fight to break out because your tricep is. Not- you know, Netflix can't come soon enough, man. I'm telling I know. you, I know that was a terrific promo. Uh, I think I even said it on Twitter. I said I do not like CM Punk one bit, but each one of those guys just absolutely. Delivered. They 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 absolutely delivered. Um, the bell bottom and punk and punk, and, yeah. and punk is going to be uh, on commentary at WrestleMania too. So looks that way. Looks that way. That, that bell bottom comment was great. Yeah, <laughs> that was really funny. I need more barbs from Punk there. That's the only. That's the only why mm-hmm. the gripe I have. You can't just keep talking to the crowd. Just and that stupid sword you carry out with you all the time. Yeah, that was funny. He doesn't do anything with it. He's right. He just walks out there with it. He's like, it's my sword. It's like when Finley was wrestling. He had the shillelagh. It was like, why Why do you have a shillelagh if you're not going to hit somebody with it? Because he, he loves to fight. <laughs> okay. but I want, Finley and he loves to fight. That's not how it works. <laughs> 
If you're walking out with a weapon, you fight somebody with it. Uh, but yeah, no, terrific promo. It takes you. It took you back to when I like when I was a kid growing up watching the Attitude Era. That was terrific. Absolutely terrific. I want more. I want more and more. Put it in my veins. Right? I was going to say, did one of them mention we're not on Netflix quite yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what <laughs> I was saying. Then, then I was like, come on, Netflix. Get there. Get there. Get there. Yeah, uh, I feel like I feel like they're making a, a slow curve back into it because, well, that and also because, you know, The Rock has kind of helped with that. But, yeah, it's, it's great. Was there anything between that and the and the 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 end of the the thing? I know there was the match with Jay and uh, Shinsuke as well, which that was a that was a solid match. You know, J- Jimmy and Solo tried to get involved, and then out comes Seth and Cody, and that leads and then uh, to... Drew Drew hit Seth right. Yeah, Drew hit Seth with a, a future shock there towards Jeez, the yeah. end. Yeah. And then it goes into The Rock beating the crap out of Cody. Hard hard watch for you, man. And by the way, well done by The Rock. He looked like deranged. He was like, and it was raining outside, so it was perfect. He's out there. Per- it was like, camera work for this has been phenomenal. By oh, the yeah. They were following, and he's like, look, look, Mama Rose, look what I'm doing to your boy. And I was like, oh, my God, this is getting, like, insane. And then there's a trailer with Stone Cold and John Cena on the back of it. I can't wait till they show up at WrestleMania to stop. Yeah, they're them. supposed to be. They're supposed to rumored to be at WrestleMania as well. So you got to have Stone Cold at WrestleMania. I mean, like we will all lose our minds when that glass breaks. Every one of us, we will go absolutely crazy. He'll walk out with his knee braces on. You know. Mm-hmm. Generic. So we did get a, a couple of match announcements for Stand and Deliver, or at least one of them. Uh, Obi Fema is going to defend the North American title against both Josh Briggs and Dijak at Stand and Deliver. Okay. Wow. So three three big boys going after each other in that in that match. That's going to be that's going to be Dijak. phenomenal. I would like Dijak to win that. Dijak. That is going to be a great match, I think. Yes, I will totally take that. Team Dijak, though, uh, that guy can wrestle. He's fun. Uh, mm-hmm. He's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm trying to think of this. No, that's all we got. Man, yeah. it was a, f- a phenomenal show. It was a yeah. phenomenal. I'm exhausted. Like I said, it was I am a phenomenal asking. Monday night. I think two Friday's going to be really, really good. Uh, I'm expecting it to anyway. And then, of course, Rock's supposed to appear on Monday night, the go home show for Raw next Monday. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, who knows what the next few weeks are going to ha- have for in store for us. So we're only like, what? Nine, ten days from my question, WrestleMania? My question is, does Seth Rollins make a move on, like, Solo or Jimmy and just beat the living daylights out of them backstage or something like that? Like, mm-hmm. are we going mob rules here? Like, they take one of your guys, you take one of theirs kind of thing? No, if anything, Cody's going to do it. Yeah. Co- Cody, Cody's probably going to do it to Solo, if I had to guess. Because... Jimmy's in a match with Jay, so you can't really do it to Jimmy. Obviously, you can't do it to Roman. So Solo's going to be the sacrificial lamb, hmm. I think. You, we might see that Friday. That would be really interesting. I, I, I would just like more people to be on Cody's side. I, I know that sounds crazy, but I, I would like to see like. I think that's why they were subtly hinting at Austin and Cena, too. Yeah, yeah. So. Somebody needs to come out there and help help the guy out. He just he just got destroyed on live television in the rain in Chicago. Um, but yeah, no, it excellent SmackDown, excellent Raw. Boy, it doesn't it doesn't get much better than that. We're on the road to WrestleMania. We'll get mm-hmm. there. Boy, yeah, we'll get there eventually, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm I'm excited for it. I want to ask you something real quick while, before we end off here. What is one WrestleMania match that not many people really liked, but you enjoyed a lot? I really loved... They didn't like the match. A lot of people didn't like the match, but... Uh, I mean, you got to put Hogan and Rock up there. Like, that was terrific. That should have been the main event. They, they really botched that. 
Uh, but I really like the friends, the friends match, Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. And apparently mm-hmm. it was so bad that like Vince McMahon wouldn't talk to either of them or whatnot. But that, that was close to the end of uh, Jericho's tenure, obviously. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, they didn't like that storyline a lot, even though we all like the Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho friendship storyline. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be interesting. Oh, what, one more thing, though. MJF, not on any of the AEW uh, internet uh, websites. What is that? What happened? Oh, no. If Triple H takes that man, can you imagine? Yeah. AEW is in trouble if that happens. If, if MJF shows up at WrestleMania, I'm going to shit a chicken. I'm just going to be like... Feathers and all? Oh, yeah. But, just <laughs> Feathers are going to shoot out right behind me. But we're watching it night two. We're doing a live watch uh, at night two. Um, Nick and I and uh, Carlos and stuff like that. But my God, I mean, I, I noticed that he wasn't on the uh, any of the AEW socials or website, and I was thinking, like, if somehow Hunter snagged this man, Tony is going to flip his shit. <laughs> he will shit a chicken. Yeah, he will. He will shit a chicken. It'll be bad. He'll shit a bunch of chickens if that happened. Oh, totally. He's already, he's already mad that he lost Punk. So, well, see, I th- I think here's the difference. Tony came in and said, "Yeah, Punk, do what you want," and he did what he wanted. He pissed somebody off like he does, right? Mm-hmm. I think Triple H looked at Punk, who who. Let's be honest. Well, see, I think I think it's also the immaturity in AEW, really. Yeah, it, it is. It is very immature there. Because you see, Punk's basically doing the same thing at WWE, but these guys are more mature about it. Yeah, they're more mature about it, but also I think he's on a tighter leash because uh, it just seems that way. They're, they they talked to him and the Miz used to hate each other, and now they're hugging it out backstage and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if there's been he's enough- definitely. He's definitely buried some hatchets. Right, yeah. He, he, away, so. he would have to because there's a lot of pissed off people when he came back. But what I remember, uh, but there was always talk that Triple H told him, like, if you, I swear to God, if you fuck around, <laughs> like, I'm going to I'm gonna end you. Like, that'll be it. But uh, they're making it work, and I'm kind of shocked because Triple H definitely did not like CM Punk when they were when he was here, um, I remember the promos they used to cut on each other that were getting a little too realistic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, my favorite one being uh, when uh, a, you don't wear the pants in the family, but you do wear her panties, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he said to Punk, like, do you notice all the alternatives and whatever you cash out all have you in charge, like? If you wanted to make this thing better and you weren't in charge, would you take it? And uh, I see him Punk didn't have an answer. And I was like, that's 100% true. He's ego. Um, but, yeah, uh, that and I remember, you know what, Punk? Do you see these people here? Some of them actually like the WWE. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I was like, it's, it's a good point. But, yeah, I, I've, I'm a CM Punk hater. I've never liked him. I, I, I think – once and then the whole walkout thing where they were just buddy buddy afterwards was oh all, I think that was also part of why they just kind of made up and just yeah kept going. Well, he's older now. I think Paul Punk why he left was because of the the staff and the doctors Vince McMahon was when he left. I well, mean. well, no, he still talked to Vince. Did it he? was the 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 medical staff you know didn't. You know, oh yeah, properly the staff, take care of them the and all staff that infection and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. That and f- freaking that idiot Ryback <laughs> just tried to kill him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, that's that, and of course he was. It was supposed to be him and Triple H at WrestleMania, I think. That right. Year. Right. But, but I, I love I love that whole thing where it's like everybody walked out because nobody there was no confidence in Triple H and the. And then Punk Punk came back. It's like I feel like I'm like, well, hell, I started this whole mess. Uh, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, 
You want me to do commentary? I want you to do commentary. Can I wear your blazer? You can even wear my blazer. I'm in. <laughs> hey, I'm going to need you to pull double duty. Please ring the bell. Double pay. Double pay. <laughs> that's right. That's how you do it. Uh, that's great. That's yep. great. It was almost like a house show, show early on in that episode. So it's Totally. Great. Totally. Well, we have to I, was, I, was, I will say this before we go off. One one match that I like that not really many people do, the Firefly Funhouse. That, oh, whole, yeah. that, whole, that whole section was great. Just shows oh. you how what a creative genius Bray Wyatt was. He really was. I got to watch that documentary. And John Cena was on board for all of it. Oh, too. yeah. He was on oh. board for all of it. A lot of people were. A lot of people respected him. Uh, <laughs> Even even what what did the Rock say? Like the Rock sees you. Like I see how like, crazy you are. I, you have it all. Like that that was that was great. The Boneyard match was great. You know, COVID made them go way off the eight ball that oh, yeah. year. Way they had no choice. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but, that that Boneyard match was like almost the perfect way for the Undertaker to retire. Honestly, absolutely, one hundred percent. Mr. Sam, what you got going on the rest of this week? I've got the LTS show on Thursday. I've got Fanboys Unleashed on Sunday. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, we'll be talking about, uh, on Fanboys Unleashed, we'll be rounding up the rest of the free agency, uh, what's important, what's not. I'm sure Brad will be talking about Legereus Sneed until I'm ready to die. And, you know. That's just that'll be where we are, and it'll be uh, super awesome. And we'll see if any other things develop. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, tomorrow night, uh, baseball shows back. We're getting ready to gear up for the start of the regular season, which is in two days. Ooh. Two days. Um, so that starts on Thursday. Um, we're going to be giving our preseason awards tomorrow night, and then next week, next Wednesday. We're going to be doing our early top 10, uh, top 10 power rankings. So definitely check that out. Saturday, one-on-one -on -one with AP. I don't know who my guest is going to be just yet. I got to get with some people, see if they would be wanting to come on. If I can't find anybody, we might skip a week. Who knows? Um, Sunday, NFC East Roundtable. We're going to be doing our draft special on that show Sunday night. Uh, so it'll be just them three talking about their met moves and me talking about the $1 million left cat you know, cheeseburger that Jerry Jones still has. Uh, and whether, and I'll ask them, I'll ask them whether or not they feel Dak Prescott is going to be in a cowboy uniform next year or where they could see him going. So, cause that's, that's a thing now. Uh, so yeah. And then of course this will be next Tuesday will be our WrestleMania go home show. <laughs> because yeah, because we'll be, what, four days, four or five days from WrestleMania next week. So, yeah, stay tuned. We're going to have a lot to talk about. A lot of We'll make our official predictions for WrestleMania 40 next Tuesday. How about that? Sounds like a fun time to me. Let's do it. Yep. yep. Sam, anything else before we end off tonight, sir? No, but I'm going to take a lovely poo as soon as we get off. <laughs> Same. Guys, have a great rest of your night. We'll be back next Tuesday again for the WrestleMania Go Home Show. But until then, love y'all. Stay safe. Have a great night. See Take ya. Care. Thanks so much for joining us. And until next time, let's talk sports, friends. Thanks for watching.